one, two, three, one, two, three, check, 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 check. It says I am live. <laughs> I can see Fernanda, I can see Sandy. Let me know if you can hear me. That is always the first thing, right? Can you hear me? <laughs> Lesson learned. I have to say that it is a wonderful day on the patio today. Beautiful temperatures. I've got about 27 degrees in the shade. Lovely jubbly. I can see one ad popping up on my control device. And let me know when and if you can hear me. Which I'm typing in right now. Of course, if you're watching the ad, that is awesome. I appreciate that support. <laughs> just checking, just checking. I may be a little bit early. Who knows? I am not going to move and fuss around until I do not get a confirmation. My ad has stopped. Has your ad stopped? Dunno. We're about to find out. <laughs> Carrie, it's good to see you. Hey. <laughs> well, Maria Gisela Pacho. Okay. I am sorry. Let me apologize to Maria. I always call her Maria. You see? Gisela. It should be easy. My aunt was called Gisela. I had an aunt in the so south of Munich. Her name was Gisela. It's good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Anybody from the United States, goodness me, goodness me, your weekend must be buzzing, busy, and maybe a little bit noisy. Happy 4th of July weekend. I appreciate that you're here if you're from the U.S. because, dang, I was thinking, now nah, people are too busy doing what they should be doing. Happy 4th of July weekend. And to the Canadian in the house, happy Canada Day as well. I know, I'm a day and a dollar late. The day late, <clears throat> that is because we're in Spain. The dollar late, uh, that's because YouTube doesn't pay much. Carrie <laughs> <laughs> from Ohio, that's awesome. Also to you, happy 4th of July weekend. You guys have an extended time to prepare and enjoy. I think that is amazing. And Portugal, I hope you're doing well, as best as you can be. Know that I'm thinking about you. And anybody who is listening, if you are expecting emails from me, oh, I am so sorry, I am way behind on my correspondence. My right side is still giving me issues. It is extremely painful to sit, to lie down, to walk. It's like, what am I doing here? Why am I here? <laughs> but uh, so my, my correspondence time is very limited because it's very, very painful. So what I try to do is really just focus on the editing and hopefully not make mistakes because I'm trying to get through it somewhat fast. <laughs> and then, of course, the comments. And I'm really hoping that I can get to my email correspondence, maybe two emails, leave the desk, come back, two more emails. It's something I have to work on. It's something I normally don't do. I like to do everything in one go. But I have a feeling I'm going to have to change that chip because it's, it's not working for me. So, long story short, anybody expecting emails, I am so sorry. This is normally not how I operate. But hey, my body normally doesn't operate like this during the summer either. So <laughs> anyway, I have a little bit of a correction to make with regards to my title. This is my oldest foul in the collection. Let me say mm, a named Phalaenopsis. I have other complex hybrids that are older than her. So 2017, this one is 2018. I thought I was going to be tackling Alexandra and I got the two mixed up. Spoiler alert for anybody who doesn't know, I have dyslexic tendencies. <laughs> That's how I like to call it <laughs> because um, pure dyslexia, yeah, that would have manifested itself in totally different ways. So anyway, I got the mixed up. Alexandra also needs staking. 
but she is not in active root growth. And hot kiss is. Hot kiss is a very big lipped burgundy with white spotted orchid. And back then, the Phalaenopsis with the big lips weren't that popular. So when I placed my order from this nursery here, which I normally don't mention anymore because I still struggle with PTSD from them, I ordered myself Hot Kiss. She's a very slow grower. Yes, she does lose leaves, but she's not exactly the biggest performer. It's like her name gives her privileges to say, I'm going to be a little bit more fussy, but she is showing the best root growth I have seen from her in many, many, many years. Now, I attribute that to calcium nitrate during the winter and calcium and magnesium during my winters, which are extremely cold for these warm to hot growers. My temperatures in the grow space drop to 14 degrees Celsius. I do not heat. I do not use supplemental light. So my go-to fertilizer, if I fertilize, well, while they're spiking and everything, I want to fertilize, I go to calcium focusing on calcium as my main ingredient. Seems to be working out quite well. So you see, she has been potted up quite a few times by now and never ever did I need to stake her in the past four years because I got her September 2018, four and a half years. Today is the day and I'm so glad you're joining me. Hey, hey, Orchid Ninja Sharon Sun all the way from Australia. Goodness me, girl, girl. Good morning, yikes. Early bird catches the worms. Wow, thank you so much for being here. You missed nothing, except for now. I'm not buffering. You can hear me. <laughs> All the wonderful things that uh, <clears throat> can and have gone wrong in the past. Okay, I'm going to cover you up. You've had rain, thunder, and the internet is in and out. You won't miss much. I am not expecting any drama on this. This is a lovely little project that I'm not going to have to, you know, go silent on, like with the separating of my intermedia that we did, where I was like, oh, dead air, dead air. It's not always advantageous, but this should be pretty straightforward. If we have bad roots, we shall remove them. If we don't have bad roots, well, hey, hey, bonus. So yeah, you can see that. Since I repotted her, it's taken her another two years to get her grow on. And she's coming out so easily, which is concerning. Huh. Let's have a look-see. It's not too shabby, but boy, am I glad she's bringing in those new roots. They are much needed. Okay, that was silly with that leaf in the way. So, madam you have some work to do and I'm talking to the orchid not to myself <laughs> yeah that's okay at least we know that that kind of confirms the reluctance of root growth over the years uh, let me get you down a little bit closer let's see sorry about the scooters in the background this is raw this is real if I were to edit all this out, we would lose the chat for the replay. If anybody watches on replay, they wouldn't be able to see the chat. So I try to keep it as real as possible. Now, the question is, she's going back in the same size pot. I'm not going to do any, any changing there, but I did prepare a clean one. So, you know, it's like a cooking show. Let me just make sure. I don't need to be chopping anything just because these are dead. I'm not going to be fussing around chopping anything off. Just remove what could mainly decay because I have every intention of just potting her up, sitting down with you and having a little chitty chat and see how everybody is doing. I'm seeing rainstorms, internet going out. Uh -huh. Finally, I can say that's not happening here. I'm not going to jinx the internet but I can say the rainstorms are not happening here. <laughs> so what I did prior is I soaked her in 600, close to 600 parts per million of the rain mix fertilizer, because I did mention earlier in other videos that I'm upping the ante when it comes to fertilizer concentration for my 
complex hybrid Phalaenopsis, which, you know, to a degree, she fits that. She's a complex hybrid. She just happens to have a name. Now, I was looking for something, and I can't see it. <laughs> Excuse me while I waddle around the patio <laughs> to get the fresh pot. Oh my goodness, and you will probably hear the flip-flops and everything, <laughs> a sound I thoroughly enjoy, but it's not exactly, exactly a pleasant sound for others to enjoy. I have to make sure how I put my feet on the ground that I don't trip or fall. So it, everything is very pronounced, even the sound of my flip-flops. It's... Uh... <laughs> I have to learn so many new different things just to make sure I don't fall. Because goodness me, what's going to give when I fall, if I fall. Don't want it, that to happen. So, you see, I could have done this sooner. <laughs> but then I went live. I was thinking, my pot, my pot, let's get the microfibers in and then go live. And then I was, I already forgot that thought and went live. Anywho, we've got that done. That was pretty straightforward. I am thinking though, because I'm going to put a stake into this pot, I only have one hole, that's going to be free, so one microfiber, which I don't really like to do, because we're going to be using chunk, big lecker for the chunky roots, and then uh, I prefer to have <laughs> more microfiber in here. So. Change of plans, change of plans, we can make them into single strands. And that, my friends, is a rhyme in its own right. We'll do that again. And now we have ourselves plenty of holes. We get the microfiber up and into the pot with some distance, that'll work for me. And we've got plenty of space for the steak. Looks good to me. Let's get that in here. And let's see that we get the steak in here. Now, I may actually need to raise you up again. If you have any questions about anything I'm doing or anything I'm not doing that you would do, let... Oh, eight likes already. That is awesome. Thank you so, so much. Um, anything you would like me to do, as in why aren't you doing this, that or the other, let me know. Sometimes I forget things until it's too late. And sometimes I have reasons for doing what I'm doing. So I'm just going to check the chat. Hey, Don Miguel, jefe, it's good to see you. <laughs> yeah, the flushing is, don't worry about flushing, just because I keep banging on about it. <laughs> Your orchids seem to do perfectly fine without the flushing. It just goes to show that you've got your fertilizing dialed in. Which some of, some of us, like myself sometimes, we do not. So it's always good to be on the safe side. Okay, there we go. Get some water in there. Maybe we can get a little bit more water in there. Don't have to be stingy on the water. I've been harvesting all day yesterday and today. <laughs> just to make sure I have plenty for this project, plus all the other ones that need it. Okay, Michael McCarthy, good that you're here. Back in the day, you saw this on one of my first Phalaenopsis videos, my taped stakes. You said, don't they have... Okay, that's too long. Don't they have the... What did you call it? Water repelling something or other? for the steak to make it water repelling? And I said, yeah, probably. Or I said, mm, don't know, because I've never checked. I've always done it with tape. <laughs> you can see some things don't change. We're still with the tape. I don't like how wobbly this is. This is always the problem though, when you put the tape on, it could be a little bit too thick. So I do try to wrap enough around the base to make it nice and thick to fit into the hole snug. And then because I've never changed my issue with, I love tape, <laughs> boxing things up, wrapping presents. I was always very generous on the tape. Seems like that is still a thing here. 
<laughs> Let's see if that works a little better. Just a tad. There we go. Have you got any rain yet, Michael? Yeah, still wobbly. Now oh, that is not good. Let me see. If I was filming this, I would not accept that wobbly steak either. The point of the steak is to secure the orchid and not have the steak pop out afterwards, after a while. This is long term. Let's see if I can't help it out a little bit. Without breaking my pot, of course. Let's give it a little bit of encouragement to come through. Okay, something like that. Are we happy now? Still going to be wobbly. Oh dear. Hmm. Yes. We'll see. We'll see how this works out. Flush in lieu of feeding once in a while. I decided they didn't need to be watered today. Yeah, okay, here we go. Okay, well, don't let your steak be wobbly. Do not do this at home. This is not part and parcel of the exercise. I'm going to have to figure out how to work with this. But I don't want to be messing around too long because this orchid is not accustomed to having her roots exposed for that length of time. But what I am glad about it, about this scenario, is that I can put her as low in the pot as I feel like because sometimes the roots that are in the pot also make it a little bit more difficult for me to, you know, get her down into the pot, get the new roots to touch the lecker or close to touch the lecker. So I'm always fiddling around with the lecker, trying to create a little bit of a canyon for the roots to grow into. Now, I have today 12% humidity. Thank goodness, no wind. But I've been watering, flushing, and flushing the mounts as well. All the mounts three times today. And when I'm done here, one more time, especially the monster mount. So that humidity, the lack thereof, it's all part and parcel of why I do what I do as soon as I see roots. So I'm really pleased that I, in a way, the upside is that I don't have many roots in the pot because I can now be a little bit more radical with the leka I'm going to put in. My leka reads 200 parts per million. It's a little bit high for my liking, but it has been soaking in this container for four months. So if you take 200 parts per million after four months of no water exchange, that's clean. That's clean in my books, except I've got a bit of moss floating around. If you've got 200 parts per million after 24 hours, change the water. And just let me... The king is looking at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. But he wasn't lying where I did that. Eh? Come here. Now we got to respect the steak. As in the support, not the food. Have you ever wondered about people who don't speak English or are learning the language that they may get confused with the words in the English language that all sound the same, spelt differently, have a different meaning? Question. Something that has, was brought to my attention a long time ago when somebody said English is hard to learn and I said, no, it isn't. And they brought some examples to my attention and two decades later, I still have not forgotten. So when I say steak, that kind of reminds me of what he said. And I thought, that is interesting to hear it from a perspective of a person who learns English as a second language and doesn't grow up with it. Just a thought. I was wondering if it had ever crossed your minds as well as English-speaking citizens. Okay, let me get... Now, I've got two wires here. Let's see. 
let me see, I've got a thicker one, but it's also harder to maneuver. <sighs> we'll keep the orchid a little bit more steady. But because the stake is wobbly, I don't want to be jiggling those root tips. They're not touching the leka. So you see there, there is no root tip touching the leka. And to be 100% sure, what I'm going to do is make sure I remove it. Because as I jiggle, leka may actually start to get close to root tips. But I didn't want to tie her off first, which is something I sometimes do when the stake is safe and secure and steady. Then I'll tie the orchid off and then fill around with leka. But I couldn't really do that here because I didn't know what I was up against. So we'll take the thinner wire for now and see what happens. As I mentioned, she's not exactly a fast growing Phalaenopsis. So it's not like in two or three days. Oh, <laughs> welcome my gate. It's not like in two or three years, not days, years, we're going to be doing this again unless she surprises me because I've increased the fertilizer. I doubt it though. She is so finicky. Two years ago, she, her buds blasted because she was in a location. I had moved her from where she normally blooms. I thought the afternoon light would do her good. She got a bit of a draft and the spike one day it looked just like grapes at the end of it. So I said, okay. And then I thought, you know what? This year, 2023, I'm going to put her back where she normally bloomed for me. But of course, when I opened the terrace door, a draft came. The blooms take forever also to open. So she'll, <laughs> the bud is here and then poop, like giving directions on a bicycle that doesn't have a light. You stick your right hand out or your left hand. The petal opened, boop one and a week later boop. <laughs> i'm like why are you so shy <laughs> she's very slow in everything she does <laughs> and then of course i have to open the terrace door that meant i think i got three blooms out of her and she doesn't bloom vigorously either she blooms nine if you're lucky in my climate maybe eight so all in all, yes, I got myself a big lip fell before they hit the consumer market in the supermarket and the big box stores, but she's kind of a space hog at the moment. So in hindsight, I would have said, nah, not necessary. Now, before I really poke myself out, I'm going to bring down the stake to size. You see how I just moved her? If that had been touching Lekka, I would have been very annoyed with myself. Now, hmm. Okay, readjustment of cap. Hands on hips, stand back. Where do I want the wire to go? Ideally around here, but no, we're going to go lower. We're going to go the lowest part. The strongest part. This leaf is being absorbed. So no amount of calcium has made a difference there. Not yet anyways, maybe in another year or two until she figures out that, you know, there's more in her menu. Maybe by that time she may hold on to more leaves. But yeah, so in hindsight, you know, if anybody said, oh, Nina, yeah, I love that hot kiss. Do you recommend it? I would say, nah, I'll tell you everything I just told you and then let you make up your mind whether it's something that you want in your collection. Personally, my Bubblicious came along. Romeo's Nuve came along. And they are much better performers than this one is. Now, if she were fragrant, different story, but she's not. So there we go. Okay, <clears throat> let's see. We don't nick the orchid. Okay, on the list of must needs. Uh, would you cut? Sometimes I can't get through the plastic. Maybe it's not the pliers, maybe it's my wrist. Everything on the right side is starting to fail. So we put the tag in. And now we're going to continue filling her up. Ooh, that breeze is lovely. 
Pal hope your blooms watch. Not yet. Not yet. But it seems like all of a sudden the other spike is trying to catch up. They are a phenomenon, Stanhopia blooms. I'm only getting two on the smallest growth, but the fact that such a tiny little growth is actually going to bloom impresses me. So Babe Ruth fragrance coming up very, very soon. And I love Babe Ruth. We don't get that here, but I love it. And I haven't moved her to the blooming alley, and I'm questioning if I should because the blooming alley is quite busy. I have a lot of maneuvering to do there at the moment. My Stanhopia blooms are, I would say, maybe the second flush is on time. The flush that's coming now, mm, three weeks early, in my opinion. But so far, we've got all the spikes going where they should be. I've still got my eye on one where I'm like doubtful. So we may lose the blooms on that. And I'm liking this. Very, very much when it comes to this phalaenopsis. I'm just going to pour, oh, yeah, steak. Eh, don't like that. So hang on a second. <clears throat> I don't want the steak being pushed up. So let's get it onto some lecker to create the height. And I'm going to pour my spent RO water into my Gloriosa lilies, which are drinking like crazy. They normally do not get RO water, they get tap water. But while we're here, I'm not going to waste that RO water into a Benjamini Ficus. <laughs> my, my plants get prefer, preferential treatment. Hokey cokey. That's it. Hopefully, that's it. So I've got, let's see, I've got one root. Already touching the lecker, I'll be watching that closely. The other root in the back here is also touching the lecker at its tip right there, just past. There's a bit of lecker. And that will be it when we'll see how the third one is going to approach the lecker. A ver, I don't like this thing right here. You're too close. I'm going to put you back here. Come sa. Hecho. Done. A ver. Fertilizer. Yep. And we're just going to put back fresh fertilizer into the pot and I just poured into the crevice of the leaf. Doi! It's a good thing that it is summer because now I would be freaking out. So water just went in there. But she has plenty of time to be on the patio getting some air while we have a chit chat and I'll bring you something that is gorgeous if you would like to have a look see and have a little chat and look at something gorgeous and cute and oh my goodness so we'll put our prime candidate here let's see let's get you a clean angle because you don't want to be seeing what's going on at the on the left <laughs> it's not so bad I've had worse I've had, oh boy, if I can get around to editing tonight, there will be a video up tomorrow. <laughs> I was a little bit exhausted after that one. I kid you not. And of course, I was sitting there editing another video and I thought, why did I do this today? And I thought it had to be done today. <sighs> so, if we had smell-o-vision, Oh, I'm going to cry. She's so beautiful. If we had smell of vision, I would ask you to scratch, uh, let me say, a little bit of jasmine, but not the heady jasmine, more leaning towards, I know this is going to sound gross, but think of it as pleasant and fresh, yeah? The stone that you, back in the day, that you put into the toilet so that when you flushed, it would, you know, odorize or do whatever that stone does. A very citrusy fragrance with a little bit of a um, chemical hint to it. But then the note of jasmine kicks in and it all combines beautifully into Banda Falcata, which I'm sorry, but to me that is a neo every day, all day, any day. I have 10. <laughs> I have 10. 
And uh, my care collab is going to start out a little bit differently. <laughs> I already filmed the clip today. I just can't help myself. But uh, there's a care collab going to air on the 15th of July. Oh, she's so pretty. Hot Kiss can be sort of in the background. We don't have to see Hot Kiss. There's not much to see. We've done our job. But in the last two nights, I was thinking, yeah, how am I going to do this? What am I going to do about it? And I just, I'm sitting in the living room after I finished editing, which is usually around editing, uploading, description, you name it, everything that you have to do. And I'm sit it's about 1230 at night. And I'm sitting there, winding down, trying to catch up with other things. And the last two nights, the breeze was the breeze, very light airflow. And it was wafting into the living room where I'm sat and Neo Phoenicia Falcata perfume. <gasps> I was like, I cannot believe this. I just cannot. So <clears throat> my care collab starts out a little bit differently <laughs> because I just have to capture the emotional moment of sitting there in the dark. Well, I have a candle on, but in the dark and, and knowing that my Neo is so, so strong. This morning, as I was doing my rounds, I have, because the angle of the sun is so high, I don't need to put the side curtain on that faces south and of my blooming alley. So everything is open with the exception of the west side. And I was doing my rounds and it was just Neo everywhere <laughs> because my Parkinsoniana also, I mean, she smells at night as well, but it's just topping the list right now. So. Unfortunately, uh, let me see, one of the spikes, it would appear, I don't know, it's already going over a little bit. It's like three days of spectacular show and then, you know, bit by bit the spikes start to decline as and when they open. But yeah, I got 10, even though I thought I was only going to get like eight. I could only count seven or eight. It was only once they were up and out that I could count. And once they had buds, because I was going cross-eyed, I didn't know what I was looking at anymore. Had I counted you? Have I not? So anyway, <laughs> it is just magical to sit in a space and then think of something else. And all of a sudden, this fragrance comes wafting in. It's delicious. I love it. Jesenia Luna, hola. It is wonderful to see you. Welcome. I have no recollection, I think, of ever seeing your name before. I'm not sure. Forgive me if you have commented in on the channel and the videos before. But bienvenidos, Desenia Luna. Beautiful name. And then you've seen ants crawling around on the, the spikes. Well, I've got, yes, it's a pain. I've got ants everywhere. Um, my papi Leonanthe has opened her blooms. Chao Praia is not far behind, so I'm going to have a beautiful little tropical vibe going in the corner back there. And, you know, I'm trying to take pictures. My arms were getting sore <laughs> because I'm trying to take a picture and boom, another ant appears. They are so annoying at the moment. I've tried so many things. With ants, I don't like to do any spraying, etc., because of the animals. But I did try borox. I even started a video on how to prepare borox mix, etc., to um, make make the recipe. I've got all that filmed, and then I thought I would wait and see if it's actually effective. That video never aired because I never saw it do a thing. <laughs> Julie, son, hey. Oh, girl, I hope that you are okay. It's good to see you. Also, very late yonder where thou art. So, yeah, I've got the start, the clip, the recipe for borox and how to use it against ants. And that was in 2022, so you can tell <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> I, even, I even sent my house guest out to get me borox because he is out and about. <clears throat> I'm not. I prefer to be on the patio for reasons <laughs> but i said uh, if you can just pick me up some borox and so yeah <laughs> two years jesenia luna two years now you then know about my list and i'm going to check my list and i'm going to owe you a massive apology 
unless your account is private. Cornmeal is safe for pets. And the pets won't eat it. I mean, I have a pup that I have to even watch if a bit of lecker drops on the floor. My bird is uh, losing its feathers and all of a sudden Siliano's flying around, down comes a feather and who, gra who grabs it before it lands on the floor? King. So if I can put cornmeal out, they'll take it back to their nest and then they will inflate, for lack of a better term. Anyway, Jesenio Luna, thank you so, so much for being here for the past two years. I appreciate it. I'm so glad to see you. What about the stakes I used to make the white wire? That would be a great idea. The only thing I've never, the reason I've never done it is because when, you see, my root growth on my Phalaenopsis has always been marginal. Now, if an orchid would grow roots fast and really well, then it won't lift the stake out along with it, if you know what I mean, because the roots will grab onto the pot, etc., and it will create its own stability. So the wire stakes, they're a little bit too bendy-bendy. I don't have fast enough root growth or vigorous enough root growth for them to establish. I mean, you just saw with the hot kiss how <clears throat> little roots she had after so so many years so I've always been reluctant to use that it is a good thought though and if I do see a phalaenopsis that has lots and lots of roots I may go down that road homonyms <clears throat> okay I'm reading Michael's comment I was trying to make sense what was I talking about I look he wasn't lying where I poured the water. It was the splashing. He's a wiener dog. He's supposed to be a hunter. He's supposed to love splashings and waterings. And I try to cool him down and mist him with my, with my sprayer sometimes because he's always there with me. And then he, you know, because it's hot and he's sitting on the terracotta. He won't go in the shade. He's by my feet. So I try to mist him and then he's like, oh, and then he leaves. It's not like I want to get rid of him. It's just sir doesn't want to have his paws or any it's just bizarre okay okay i'm sorry to hear that sandy as long as you're safe this will be on replay for sure so carrie says when it comes to corn cornmeal let me make sure because my mind my dyslexia would say corn something else and i don't want to miss that hang on a second cornmeal yes they can't digest it. I have dogs, ants, can't digest it. Research for birds, please. I don't know. Okay. Well, for me, it is mainly outside. So the cornmeal for ants, and they can't digest it. Am I not quite grasping what you're trying to tell me? That wouldn't be a first thing. That wouldn't be a first. How is everybody doing, especially down under? I'm hoping that uh, if anybody is... The chainsaw. Dang, that's horrible. Is there no sound restriction? In Germany, there's a, there's a certain gap during the weekend. Meanwhile, y'all are already on Monday. But there's a certain gap during the weekend that um, you can mow your lawn and then you can't. So there's a big hoopla on Saturdays, everybody mowing their lawns. During the week, it's not that big of a, a, a restriction, but the weekends, yes. And I believe on a Sunday in certain parts of Germany, you are not to be doing anything in your yard that makes noise for ants. Okay, and I just sprinkle it around <clears throat> and they can't digest it, but they try. And that's the problem. They try to take it back to the nest. They can't digest it. Okay, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Very interesting, Carrie. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. So, I have, what else? I, I mean, I would love to show you Papilio Nance, but she is so high above my head, my tripod doesn't reach that anymore. Then what else can I show you? Well, we saw the Radiata. She is just the prettiest and the smelliest at the moment. Let me get you, let me get my Radiata out. Because she's pretty too. I haven't moved her to the blooming alley yet because I still have buds. 
and I don't want Bud Blaster. Oh, ho, ho, ho. and oh boy, we, if nothing goes wrong, we're going to have four blooms on the Catlia Duri gun. <laughs> Calcium nitrate, I am telling you, has been a lifesaver, a growth saver recently. Now, let me make sure that I'm not going to show you something that's got a mealy bug on it. <laughs> Honeysuckle fragrance. Let's <laughs> let's increase the visual. I mean, ta-da. Let me see how we can do this and get them both in. Because amazing. There we go. Let me get my chair out of the way. That is uh, Stan the Man's handy dandy towel. And he will always have this towel now, even during winter, during the summer, I have to cover him because he will get morning light and be burnt to a crisp. Isn't that pretty? I am such a sucker for white chartreuse, white green blooms. She makes a bigger impact when she's in the sun, but she photographs horribly in the sun. Everything just gets bleached out. This came from Kateva Orhide, Dana. Mosanu, I hope I'm saying that correctly. That was a gift, a division of her giant one. And anyway, she sparkles in the sun as well. And it's something I really, really want to capture, the sparkle. She has a beautiful pixie sparkle about her. But very difficult to photograph. Late evening is the best time, pretty much. <laughs> Thank you, Jesenia. Oh, thank you so much. That means a lot. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and for a species, she's not fussy. Just like the Van der Falkata isn't fussy, which is wonderful because normally species have their quirks, they're slow, and it's just, mm, you know, but not this one. I mean, she's in spike. This is her first spike since she's been with me, growing with me. She literally came with a spike. I let the spike bloom because prostechias are usually extremely vigorous. They're not fussy per se. And then she bloomed on the spike. She was growing a new growth, which is this one. You can see the spent one right here. So this one grew throughout the winter. Can you believe it? So low light. I'm so pleased. I love me an orchid that does that. She's working on her next one. And I'm hoping that this orchid just keeps going the way she is. I love it. Right now, when it comes to making sure my orchids survive through the winter, I'm always very concerned who's going to make it, who's not. Classic example is my Leonis that we saw in the video today. So when an orchid like this comes along, yeah, love it a lot. And also very, very smelly in a nice way. Let me just say perfumed. <laughs> she smells good. She's got a honeysuckle fragrance. If I put her though next to the one that's blooming as well in my blooming alley, the cochleata that I've got blooming right now, the cochleata would absolutely knock her out. So between the Neophenicia falcata right now, during the day, she's a little bit more faint, but still fragrant. And the cochleata in the blooming alley, there's competition as I walk through. To the right, I've got honeysuckle that is absolutely a knockout. And if somebody is sensitive to strong fragrances, then <clears throat> not in a closed room, not recommended. It could be headache inducing. Luckily for me, I'm not that kind of a person. I'm not that sensitive to strong fragrances or else I would already have difficulty with the falcata. So it's, it's just wonderful. Well, Carrie, you have a seedling. Let me tell you, it's not going to be a seedling for very long. I have a Prostechia Garciana Alba that I got with three bulbs, a new growth in 2018, I believe it was. And it is now in a huge pot. If I say 30 centimeters, I don't, I think that's 13 inches. I'm not entirely sure if somebody can confirm that. I'm guessing I had to take it off the mount. I can't keep up with the watering. I put it into a self-watering pot with Akadama for bonsais because of the high water retention it's got. And even now it has filled the pot. I can't keep up with watering with the way that it's growing because look at it. It's over there. That one. Because the way it's growing, if the roots don't hit something super duper quickly, 
they fail. So the growths start to have the concertina things. They fail very quickly. But because I've got about 150 new growths and more coming in that pot, <clears throat> it's another one I'm not particularly concerned about if a new growth fails. It's like, okay, too bad, so sad, not. <laughs> this is from September 2018 to date. And I had three pseudobulbs and new growth coming. And she bloomed on one of the pseudobulbs after she arrived in my collection. It's a monster. So when it comes to prostechias, they are such fun orchids to grow. They are confident boosting, they are fragrant, and then you add on top that it's a species when you get one like the radiata, the prostechia garciana there. It, it's like orchid growing. I can do that. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. It's such an encouragement. And then you're dealing with other things that, you know, Ah, wait a second, what do I see? <laughs> oh yeah, you see? You see? You see. Can you see? Abed? You see that white? Let me show, let me show you. I come prepared, I am armed. Abed, now it's behind that bloom. There. You see that? <clears throat> Now you see it, soon you won't. Very prone, at least in my climate, to mealybugs. But I'm glad we saw it. So there we go. It is no more because of the happy sap. Oh my goodness, happy sap producing orchids, aren't they wonderful? Except I need a shower every time I deal with my catacetinae at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but they're so rewarding, so rewarding. This morning, there, Fred Clark Yara, right there, got 600 parts per million of fertilizer. Up until now, I've been flushing, leaving a little bit in the reservoir. And this morning I was like, okay, let's see how. My love of craft, hey, so good to see you. It's wonderful to see you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your Sunday, 4th of July weekend. I appreciate that. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm 600. We're going to go for it now. Any roots that might fail because of what I could believe is salt buildup. I mean, I'm going in with all pew pews blazing. And uh, we'll see what happens. And the same for the Jack of Diamonds. I just thought, look, you're getting... 600 as well. I missed a mealybug. There we go. This is a good thing. This is a good angle. Normally I see them from other angles and I don't see the mealybugs. Dang. It's like everybody has a little one, little hitchhiker, but they're, they're gone and they're gone. Look at that. Okay. Anywho, ants and mealybugs are fine. The little microscopic scale that Stephen Van Camp and Lewis was talking about, no bueno. That is concerning in my books. So Carrie has got two new growths right now. Yes, they are. They are. You're going to have blooms sooner than you think. And especially Carrie, because I'm not sure you're probably growing indoors mainly, being in Ohio. Because they are continuous growers all year round. That was, that's what makes them so vigorous. They don't stop growing. They don't have a rest season. It's just grow, bloom, grow, bloom. And then they start to branch out. And, you know, they are happy root producers. So you'll be surprised. You'll probably have, um, well, by the end of the beginning of next year, your next growth, if these don't bloom, which I doubt, but they might. <laughs> next year, you're going to have blooms. It's good fun. Ah, oh, that is so, so sweet of you. I so appreciate that, my love of crafts. Hey, if anybody likes to see crafty things and beautiful scenery and all that fun stuff, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't matter. But my love of crafts sometimes shows the view from her deck where she lives. And you just, you just feel as though if you've just been time warped, I don't know, into a vacation location. Just wonderful. So I can't post a link at the moment, but you know, 
if you can just search my love of crafts on YouTube and then check out, it's just a beautiful place. When should you pot it up? Kerry, it's a seedling. Mm, I always say when new roots start, but as a seedling, mm, I wouldn't mess around with it unless it's coming out of the pot with its next growth. I would like to know if the pot is getting too small, if the roots are too crowded. Are you in a wet, dry cycle? Are you in a similar setup to mine, inorganic with self-watering? Basically, when you pot it up, always go for two pot size more because of their vigor, okay? Because of their generous root system. You don't wanna have to do it every year. <laughs> I mean, if you have to do it every year because we miscalculated, that's great. All we need to do is an up pot. We want the orchid to grow well and get on with it. But think big, vigorous root systems are generous. Just give it two more pot sizes. And when new roots grow, and you're good to go. This one, <clears throat> because I didn't know it and it was a gift, I had it bare root for a very, very long time in my fabulous Greek yogurt, snazzy dazzy Greek yogurt co containers with a little bit of water. Didn't even bother, it didn't care. But I didn't want to put it into Lekka. I believe it was an organic media that uh, Dana had at the time. She, brought, she gave it to me with sphagnum moss. So all that went into the container and I waited for new roots. Never looked back, never threw a fit. The pseudobulbs, while they were in the container, got a little bit wrinkly. Yeah, to be expected. They didn't recover the wrinkles either, but it's part and parcel that like perparatas have older pseudobulbs that have a little bit of a wrinkle. That doesn't mean dehydration, that's just characteristics. Oh, it's sailing weekend, you guys, honestly. It, if you just need it. Just one second, please. And we're back. The farewell committee was saying goodbye to my daughter and I had to do so as well. Um, yeah, if you just want to go for a quick visual eye candy kind of uh, feel, check out my love of crafts on YouTube. Fantastic. I love it. I just, I was blown away. I was jealous even during the winter. I'm telling you, and I can't stand winter, but that view with the snow, I mean, I'll stay inside. Thank you very much. Hot chocolate with marshmallows. I'm good. <laughs> but the view, amazing. So Carrie says it came mounted and was hot, was a hot mess to keep up with and was growing in two different, yeah, no, oops. Yeah, you don't want to keep those. I mean, if you can keep up with the watering, then anything can, can be mounted, but no. Like with my, I mean, my, my Garciana Alba that I just showed you, she is, when it comes to the size of the growth, she's maybe half, half the size. Do not be fooled by its climbing nature. But um, yeah, it became clear to me very, very quickly, maybe two seasons, I needed to make a difference. And, uh, and then this is what I have now. I still have constantly. The first year in the Leka, in the Akadama with the self-watering was wonderful. The growths came out clean, la, 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 la. Everything was happy, happy days. The past two seasons, it's just become a beast and the roots, in my dry climate, don't get to water quickly enough. So you did a good thing to pot it up. And uh, just, keep them, just keep an eye on it. <laughs> oh, my love of crafts. Oh, I'm envious. <laughs> I am envious. It is just stunning, peaceful, and gorgeous. So there's that. Now, I'm having a little bit of a look around. Don't want to bore you guys. I don't want to, you know take advantage of your time without being a little bit more active with what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> I just want to raise you up a little bit because I, can I, do I have to do the whole thing? Oh, for goodness sakes. Yeah, but you can see 
there. Okay, not the finger, there. Uh, that is Stan the Man with the two buds that are probably going to open. Yeah, I might wake up to them being open tomorrow. I'm not like Fernanda that goes out at 6 a.m. to see if Stan Hopia buds are going to open and I can actually visually experience that happening. <laughs> Salute and kudos to Fernanda. I was so moved when she mentioned that. I was like, oh, cry. If anybody doesn't know, Fernanda Nathimento Orchids and Succulents has Stan the Man, the twin, so to speak. It used to be all one orchid. <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> It's hanging on chains, but uh, it used to be one orchid and I messed up with a, nah, with a setup. I wanted it to be pretty, aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And for the first two years, I believe, it grew like a beast and it never bloomed. And I thought, okay, fine. Well, Dum Dum here thought that the spikes were going to be strong enough to push through lava rock, which they weren't. And in the two years I've had it, I lost eight eight spikes that I could count when I took it apart, which was a very painful exercise because all the roots that this thing grows, it's like a hedgehog. They are pokey pokey, they're nasty, very painful. You need oyster gloves for chucking oysters. You need to have those kinds of gloves when you're dealing and repotting a Stanhopia. But excite, very excited. She tried nine spikes this season two failed. When I saw them coming, I thought, yeah, no, that's not going to work. What you're doing there, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> True to form, she wasn't, she's not, they didn't make it. So I have my fantastic, fabulous, famous car on idle in the back. He's 30 minutes early. Normally he or she shows up at, you know, 030, 1830. So it's wonderful because especially when you're out here on the patio, I don't know what it is about people leaving their car on idle, but it's kind of gassing me out. <laughs> Maybe that's what's wrong with me. I've got diesel fumes, too many of them back here. <laughs> Carmen, you're not too late. We've, uh, you're still on time, you know, city bus. You know how it works here. Hop on, hop off. You're not too late. I mean, the fowl, she's potted up. But I'm just, you know, showing you some blooms, some pretty blooms while I inhale the pretty fragrance. So it's good to see you. Hey, hey. Oh, don't be sad. It'll be fine. I, this, or, this orchid, this video is going to be available for replay. But I want to know if you got a notification. You're welcome, Carrie. I'd like to know if people are getting notifications when I set the event. 15 likes. <laughs> this is awesome. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Just to know if anybody got notifications or is it because of the time and the day that people check to see if a live is up and running. I know that Sandy was there. Had already typed in early days. And you know what? Speaking of comments, I do pin two. No, I pin one comment. And then I ask also, if you show up in, in the chat and I ask a question about, did you get your notification, please let me know. Well, I, on my control device, I did not see my own messages. The first two, the pinned one and the asking for a not notification. How does that work? Gisela, that's great. That's great to get. No, that's fine. That's, I know that people can't always make it. I mean, it's a Sunday. What are you going to do? But uh, it's just to know if things are starting to kick in a little bit. If things are, you know, has YouTube found me? I don't think so. Okay. Whew, I just inhaled. That was nasty. Mm. Sorry about the background noise. Welcome to Spain. It's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. As we move closer and closer to August, it's going to get worse. You didn't get the last one. Okay. Socks. 
Six, I, oh, please. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, guys, please, listen. Get me through that number fast. Please. I, I was, oh, thank you, everybody, for subscribing, okay? Let's go with a positive. Thank you so, so much. Please do not unsubscribe to get me off that number. Please, please share things out. Get me out of this 666 number. I don't want to see it. Oh, it's giving me goosebumps as I stand here. Get me to 667, please. <laughs> I don't like that at all. And I am so not superstitious, but there are certain numbers I just do not like. So if you can do that for me, just don't un un don't unsubscribe because we'll be back here in a couple of weeks. Just get me through, please. <laughs> Oh, I was wondering, what is it? What, what, what am I going to do? What am I going to do if YouTube doesn't push me out there? <laughs> but thank you for the heads up. Thank you, Michael, because now at least I can put a word out. Let me just take me take me to a number that, you know, up. Get it up there to seven and, and I'll be fine. I know, I know, I know, but... Uh, and also, if I ever get to 999, I can't. I can't do the nines either. I don't know. There's something about those two numbers. It's like, ugh. 999, I would also say, don't unsubscribe, but push me through. And I know we would hit 10K, but just get me off of 999. Seriously. So when, I, when I see that happening with other channels and I'm seeing that number, I'm like, link here, link there, even though they probably don't have what I have. But, uh, <laughs> you know, for me, even though it's not ideal for the channel and not what I'm trying to achieve here, for me, 444 four, four was yes. <laughs> I love fours. And then, of course, on the studio side of things, I could see 4444. Four, four, four. Ah. I was about to take a screenshot and I thought, no, stop it. <laughs> At least you got notified when you checked the app. Okay. That is a nice number. Yes. And if the channel is doing what I'm hoping it will do by 1111, we can stay there. I'm okay with that. That is wonderful. I do like that number as well. It is a great number. In Germany, 1111 is always the start of carnival. 11.11 11 at 11.11 11 a.m. That is when the, the, the carnival starts in Germany. So it's 13 is your number. I like number 13 as well because 1 plus 3 equals 4. 13 has never ever had been a problem with me. As long as I can put add it and make it into a 4, I'll take it. It's absolutely fine. 1111 is also like a make a wish kind of number, isn't it? During the day, if you look at the clock and you time it or casually look and it's 1111, isn't that when people make a wish? I don't know. I think I've heard that somewhere before. That's not what we do in Germany, but in Germany it would just be the start of the carnival. You encountered your first disease. Yes, oh my goodness. Oh, wait, wait, you left a comment in your Cambria. Ugh. Okay, now, if you're in doubt and you want to 100% sure, are you 100% sure? I just want to know if you're 100% sure. 1111 is make a wish, okay. So you saw the purple... You saw the purple ring, and it's clear as day. I'm just double checking. I'm just making sure, because nobody needs to have that. You see, why didn't I get your notification, Carmen? I'm subscribed to you. Now I'm going to have to go and check your channel, which is absolutely fine. Congratulations on your first video. Well done. I'm going to go check it out, okay? I did not get your notification. Boo to YouTube and the Europe thing. Okay. Well, let me just say then I have a video to watch just to see and maybe put somebody's mind at rest if they need it. I don't want to impose. I'll be We're going to go to Rome, to Carmen's Orchids. Check that out. 
That's awesome as well. That's fantastic. What a way to start a, a channel. Let's just do a Fossarium video. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> no holds barred. Fantastic. <laughs> That's fantastic. Right, so. If, oh, we got 16 likes, cartwheels around the patio. How sweet, how sweet, amazing. If there are no further questions, let me just say that I thank you so, so much for being here. As always, as always, everyone, thank you for your support. I so appreciate that. And then to the Americans, have yourself a fabulous 4th of July weekend, what's left of it. Stay safe. Don't go anywhere without a helmet if you're in a state that likes to use pew pews instead of fireworks. Okay? Don't want anything falling on your head that could hurt you. And make sure you take care of all the safety precautions that normally aren't exactly written in bold letters on the fireworks. <laughs> okay? Nobody needs to be a hero. Come back, come out on the other side safe. Yes, and the little pets. Oh my goodness, I've been thinking about you, Michael. And I am so, so sorry, and I'm hoping that everything is going to go okay. Public live fast, what's this? Yes, uh, it'll be, it should be public on Tuesday, maybe tomorrow, because it's not that long, so it shouldn't take too long to process. Have yourself a fabulous rest of your day. I can pretty much say that across the board here now because the Australians were here for a moment and they are starting their day. On that one condition though, that you all stay safe and get me through to 667, please, please, please. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Oh, King says hi. Hi, hi Michael. <laughs>